You probably use Slack every day to talk to clients. They ask for things every single day. Your team has to respond. But do you know how many tickets are created every single day? What types they are every single day? Do you know how long it takes to complete the different steps of a ticket so you can spot bottlenecks? Do you know what clients or what team members or what types of tickets are causing the most bottlenecks? Do you know who's completing the most tickets on your team in both the day or the week or the month term so you know who's burning out, who's performing well, who's underperforming? Do you know who is creating tickets on your team? Which which CSMs or which account managers are creating the most and are the most responsive? You probably don't. Or if you don't, I'm going to teach you how we set this up in, in an automated way, including all of the uh, the steps. So the first thing we're going to cover is why you don't really need to have or shouldn't have tasks in your business to deal with clients, how you can set this up uh, in the proper way, in a way that's sustainable and works well for you long term and provides all the, the dashboards and things that you need to be able to manage this. Um, exactly what tech tools we use to create the, the dashboards that you saw there and the, the backend automations as well. Uh, and this is all going to let you measure how fast your team is serving clients. Uh, your team and your clients will be able to see what's being done, what's not being done. So everybody has proper expectations. It'll allow you, the owners of the business, to track the workload and output of every single team member on your team. And ultimately, what that'll let you do is measure your team, handle more clients, provide faster service, make more money, and use tools you already probably use to do it. Pretty cool. Let's stick around. So we've done this before. I trust that uh, we're basically going to compile our experience implementing this exact system with a lot of different clients and give you the best practices. So uh, high level, this is, this is how it works, right? So the client sends you a Slack request. So they might say, hey, can you modify this uh, this landing page for us? Or in our case, we do software development, we do automations. So they'd say, hey, is it possible to automate this thing? Or hey, like there's a bug here, can we fix it? Or hey, can we like change the way this thing works? So that's the first step. That's with an emoji. So they put like a certain kind of emoji with a certain type of tasks. We have like three different, three or four different emojis right now. Um, what I, what I suggest you do is just train your team on like, okay, this emoji means this thing, this other emoji, this means other thing. Uh, the next thing is, uh, after the emoji, um, an automation handles everything here in green. So the automation will get the Slack channel that the emoji came from the message it came from the time that message was sent. So you can track the initial response time or the acknowledgement time. Uh, and then it's going to look up the client based on the Slack channel and then figure out what to do based on the emoji, log the ticket, acknowledge to your clients like, hey, this has been done now. And after that's acknowledged, of course, your team will be able to start working on it in a dashboard that they see. I'll show you how that kind of the details work here. Uh, and then after the ticket is closed, of course, that will that updates the, the list of open tickets so that your team sees what's open, you see what's open and how fast things are going and your client can see what's open as well. And then that gets sent back into Slack. Um, so that's the whole flow end to end. How does this work? Or what are the different parts that you, you need specifically? So the first thing you need is a database, a place to store the list of clients, the list of tasks that are assigned or uh, tickets assigned to each client or logged in as each client, which has like the time and whatever else, um, and then the team members. So you have to have the client. And so you could have things at the client level, like the Slack channel, or the, the default team members, okay? You have to be able to link a Slack channel to a client somehow. I suggest you store this. You cannot rely on uh, the name because there's a naming convention for Slack channels. The Slack channel name could change easily. So you wanna store the Slack channel ID, not the name. The next thing you need is a ticket table. So that's gonna have things like the ticket type, like the, the time it was open, the time it was closed and then the log of every single step. So we wanna track how long every single ticket spent in every step so that you can see if there's any bottlenecks in the process and see who you need to hire for. Maybe there's a step you wanna automate, et cetera. Um, and so what that allows you to do is make data-driven decisions about whether you need more team members, whether people are, are underperforming, overperforming, and so on. 
And then the last part of this, at, at the bare minimum, is a team table. So normally what we'll do is have the name of the person, their Slack ID as a user, and uh, the role so that you can say, well, um, our, our copywriters or our designers, like these are the three designers, and, and this one is doing more designs or is doing them faster or better than these other ones. You might say, well, uh, this client has these people assigned to it. And these people's clients generally request more things or less things. So this allows you to track all that information. And then you need a dashboard to connect to the database. So the dashboard is going to show you basically three different uh, information types. One is information for your client so they can see their tickets and the status of their tickets. The second thing is your team is going to need to see uh, some place where they can look at their list of tickets. And you know maybe there's like a priority list and allow them to complete things as they go. And then you, the owner of the business, need to be able to see the, the kind of the graphs that I showed you before, which is how fast are my tickets being sorted? Are there bottlenecks? Are there things that I think should take 24 hours that are actually taking like three days? This is going to happen when you start looking at the data for sure. So really, you want a dashboard that has those three audiences for it. Um, the The thing that you'll probably notice from this is we want to create like entities. So, um, and, and the entities for your business are very distinct for your business. The ticket types that you use, the other information you want to store, maybe you want to have like a, the default team member at the client level or at the task type level and tools, tools like ClickUp or standard project management tools are meant more for projects. What we like to think about this as a, is, is a process, not really a project. So you're not really going to have like a ticket with all the tasks and subtasks. And, and the reason for that is if you have it like that, you don't really have the ability to measure accurately where the bottlenecks are in the process, right? If you have a ticket as a project and all the tasks and subtasks, uh, you can't, you, you don't really know what order they're being done in. So your data is all over the place. And the other problem too, is if you have a task as a one ticket is one task, you don't know if the design phase, of the ticket is taking longer or like the ticket type and all these kind of things. So um, you, you don't really want to use tools like ClickUp or a project management tool. You really want to design a, a specific system for ticket management specifically. And what we use is a database. We use Airtable specifically because the dashboards are built in. Um, the, it allows you to customize the data in any way that you really want to. And modifications are extremely fast because it's a no code tool. So that is a tool that I use to create those dashboards that you saw before. Okay, so that's that. Um, and then this also lets you customize, like build something for the rest of your business. So the ticketing system or like the production system we use for SEO, very different than real estate, very different than uh, like a flooring company or roofing company, a home care company, things like that. So really, the, the way you want to think about tickets and requests is as a production line, like an assembly line where tickets come in, they get sorted, they go out the other end, and it's a pretty fast turnaround. You don't want a client waiting for three weeks or four weeks to finish something. So that's what you need. The number two thing, this is a, an automation. So I'm using make.com here. It's kind of a, a Zapier alternative. You can use Zapier as well. You can use Pabbly and NitN and Python or whatever you want to use. But Fundamentally, this is how the automation works. Like it's it flow it follows the exact same flow that I talked about before, where you have uh, a thing watching for emojis. It's watching for emojis across your entire business, and, and then what we're doing is we're grabbing the message, we're grabbing the Slack channel, we're linking that to a client. We're like looking up an Airtable. Uh, it's this channel. What what you know? What client is that? And then after that, we can we kind of figure out what to do. So. We, we log the information and we respond back in Airtable or in uh, Slack, sorry, to say, hey, this request has been acknowledged. If you want to, you can ping like a person in your team. Uh, our, our people are pretty much always looking at Airtable anyway, so they don't really need to like be reminded all the time. Um, but, you know, we have we have that here. We're also, by the way, that below we're, we're actually managing when people send us documents as well. So we want to log and capture the document, make sure it's shared with our, like we have access to it uh, right away. 
And, and then we like log that against the client as well. So you can use the emoji mechanism for a lot of different things. All right, and the third thing that you need is a dashboard for your team to look at to complete tickets. So we've got uh, two guys on our team, uh, Shay and David. Uh, Shay is like the, the CSM operations manager and David is doing the automation. Um, we, we have, and this is for all of our features across the board, we kind of, we treat them like, like tickets, right? So they have a priority here on the side, they can see the current status and, and there's a couple of checklist items that we always have. This is kind of building the SOP into the ticket, if you will, or into the dashboard. And then once it's done, you know, send for QA, um, and that is it. So that is how you do it. The thing is to do all of this. We talked about building out an Airtable interface or a, an Airtable base and an Airtable system for your business. I didn't talk about that in this video, but I did record a full two-hour guide on that. You can see all that information right here.